Dividing rational expressions is on our agenda today. So let's look at uh, example number one here, which is a fairly simple one. Um, we know that the square root of 100 is 10 and the square root of 4 is 2, so therefore this answer should be 5. But when we divide radical expressions, if um, since this is a square root and this is a square root, they both have the same index there, which is 2, um, the solution here can be the square root of 100 divided by 4, which happens to be the square root of 25. 100 divided by 4 is 25, and the square root of 25 is 5. So instead of thinking about this fraction bar being um, splitting them up, you could put it inside the radical. So that way you can see them together, possibly do some simplifying beforehand. Um, example number two, they're both uh, square roots. So this um, we will have 50 x to the fourth on top and 2x squared on bottom. We know 50 divided by 2 is 25. And we also know x to the fourth divided by x squared is x squared. And so therefore, the square root of 25 is 5 and the square root of x squared happens to be x. So that's, uh, you get 5x when you simplify what we started with there in example number two. Okay, so those were some simple ones to get started. And um, example number three is basically the same way. Just take what you know about simplifying radicals and utilize it here. So since they're both fifth roots, we know that we're going to have a fifth root here, and negative 64, a to the seventh, b to the ninth on top, and 2a squared, b on bottom. We have a fifth root. Uh, what's negative 64 divided by 2? That would be negative 32. a to the seventh divided by a squared is a to the fifth. Well, look at that, 5 and 5, that's exciting. And b to the ninth divided by b to the first should be b to the eighth. There were eight more b's on top, so that's the reason why it's on top of the fraction bar now. And, okay, let's do some simplifying. What number multiplied by itself five times will give you negative 32? Remember, since this is an odd number, the fifth root of negative 32 will be negative. Negative 2, I believe. Yep. Okay, so now um, how many groups of 5 can we pull out of a to the fifth and b to the eighth? Well, we can pull one group of 5 out of a to the fifth with nothing left over. We can pull one group of 5 out of b to the eighth with b to the third power left over. And so we have simplified this. And there you go. Number four, we just throw in some variables here. Um, the kind of concern here though is though that we have a radical on the bottom of a fraction bar. You know, just pay attention to this part right here. You know they're both square roots, so if we went 3 over 2 and x, well, 3 and 2 will not reduce to anything. So it's not real helpful to go ahead and, and do it like this. We need to think about it in a different situation. Since that radical is on bottom, we need to rationalize the denominator. Since it's a square root, we're going to multiply it by square root. And if we multiply by the square root of 2x divided by the square root of 2x, we're essentially multiplying by 1. And take what you know about multiplying radicals. This should give us the square root of 6x. 
And um, what's the square root of 2x times the square root of 2x? That should be 2x. Um, we can't do the square root of 6. You can't simplify square root of 6x, so we have simplified that as much as we possibly can by rationalizing the denominator. And if we look at a situation like this, we're still going to do the same exact thing. Um, since it's just one fraction bar inside, and we cannot do any simplifying to 4a11 divided by b to the 13th and c to the 7th. We can't simplify any of that. So we're going to split it up. So it look like this. And then now we're going to simplify the top part. The top part. Um, it looks like we can pull out, if we divide by 3, we can pull out 3 triplets of A's, leaving us with 4A squared inside. And on bottom here, um, how many triplets of B's and C's can we pull out? Well, 13 divided by 3. 13 divided by 3 is 4, um, with 1 left over, so b to the 1st is left inside. And c to the 7th, uh, well, 7 divided by 3 is 2, and what's left over? There's 1c left inside. Let me move this down here so I can have some room to work. Now, you have um, you have the uh, cube root there on the bottom, and we don't... We don't want those roots on bottom. So how can we get rid of those? Well, we have to think about it here. What can I multiply? We're, we're going to have to multiply by 1. But what do I have to multiply by 1 to get B and C outside of that cube root? Well, to get B and C outside of the cube root, don't they have to be, um, don't, doesn't it have to look like that? Because then it will get pulled out. So, what do I have to multiply B by to get B cubed? And what do I have to multiply C by to get C cubed? And like I said before, you have to multiply by 1. So if we have the cube root of b squared, c squared, on top and bottom, we're multiplying by 1. Okay, taking what you learned about multiplying radical expressions, since these two have uh, the same index of 3, we can go ahead and multiply. Um, let's work with the bottom first. We have b to the 4th c squared outside, b to the 4th c squared outside. And now, if we are going to do this, b times b squared is b cubed, and c times c squared c cubed. That's what we have. Of course, we're going to simplify that here in one second, but let's, uh, let's deal with the top. Um, we have a cubed outside. And inside we have 4 a squared. And if we notice, there are no b's over here to multiply by b squared, and there are no c's to multiply. So then we're just going to get b squared c squared. And now down here on the bottom, let's simplify. Well, we know that we can pull, you know, 
a triplet of B out and a triplet of C out. So if we pull a triplet of B out, it takes this 4 up 1. And if we pull A, which is a single triplet of C out, it takes this 2 and makes it a cubed. And so what we're looking at then, I'm going to do some erasing here. What we're looking at is a simplified form. Right there. Okie dokie. And one more. One more. If we look there, we... Um, is there anything we can simplify down there on the bottom? Uh, the fifth root of 2 is 2, and x squared and y cubed, you cannot pull groups of 5 out, so that's simplified. What do we have to multiply then by? If you feel like you can do this on your own, go ahead and do that on your own, and then check your solution with mine when you're finished. Well, remember that we are trying to get... Um, the fifth root, we're trying to get 2 to the fifth, x to the fifth, and y to the fifth. So that way we can, um, you know, get rid of the radical there. Uh, so, if this is 2 to the first, 2 to the first times what number is 2 to the fifth? Well, the exponent's 1. The exponent is 5. The difference is 4. So for x, the exponent is 2. We need to get to 5. So the difference is 3. Same thing for y. We have a 3. We need to get to 5. And the difference is 2. And so far, we need to do that on the top also. On the bottom, that is what we have, but we do know that. Well, we do know that two to the, uh, the cube root of two to the fifth is just two. The cube root of x to the fifth is just x, and the cube root of y to the fifth is just y. And so looking there, what can we do to the top? Well, there's not much we can do to the top other than maybe maybe change this to 16 and then multiply 16 by 3 to get 48 because we have 4x outside of the radical. So we have the fifth root of, let's say, 16 times 3, which is 48. And then we have x cubed y squared. Oh, look at this neat little fact. I see a 4 on top and a 2 on bottom. How many times does 2 go into 2? Once. How many times does 2 go into 4? Twice. And... 1x on bottom, 1x on top. Now, we cannot cancel it with this one because that is um, under the uh, the fifth root there. But those these x's do cancel out. And so our final... Our final simplified form should look like this. That'll be our final simplified form. Okay, that's all we have for this lesson on dividing um, radical expressions and uh, rationalizing the denominator. Let me know if you have any questions.